T minus. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Hey guys. All right, today what I wanted to talk to you guys about is Kalkwasser. Kalkwasser in your ATO, a method I haven't talked to you guys about. It's a slurry method. Kalkwasser additions in a slurry method. And just a little bit more about Kalkwasser. That seems to be the underlying question that I get a real lot over and over again. Maybe like some of you are a little concerned or scared to do it because you think you're going to overdose or whatever. I did a video a while back dosing, I think it was Kalkwasser in your ATO. Maybe now that you're a little more familiar with it or if you're not familiar with it at all, this video will help you out. All right? All right, as I've mentioned before, I've been dosing Kalkwasser in all my reef tanks since 1990. I said 92 last video, it's been around 94. 92 was when I first started reef keeping and I didn't know too much about Kalkwasser. A German reef keeper by the name of Peter Wilkins uh, was really the first one to experiment with dosing Kalkwasser. The reason to dose Kalkwasser is many fold. It stabilizes and can raise your pH. It stabilizes and can raise your DKH. And it adds calcium to your water. It's important to test when you first start dosing Kalkwasser. Test your pH, your alkalinity, and your calcium. Those can fluctuate during this time because of the amount you're putting in. So when you dose in your ATO, you want to determine first how many gallons of water, say in one week, you're going through in evaporation. So for example, if you have a 20 gallon tank like mine, and you're evaporating one gallon of water per week, one half teaspoon in one gallon of water in your ATO. Mix it up really well, you'll get some fallout. A lot of things you read will say a gallon will consume a half teaspoon of Kalkwasser, but I've never found it to do that. It always leaves some residual on the bottom, which is fine. It's the clear liquid above the bottom that you're concerned with. That liquid has a pH of 12, so that's why you don't want this to go in all at once. However, if that should happen, it's usually just a temporary raise in pH, hopefully not too much where it's gonna be detrimental to your tank. And then you'll test to see what your calcium and alkalinity are doing and your pH. You should test all three every day the first week or so. Let me explain to you the slurry method. For example, if you're dosing Kalkwasser in your ATO and your tank is not evaporating enough water, then you can dose it manually. It's a lot more work, but it'll still achieve what you're trying to do. The calculation is one quarter teaspoon dry Kalkwasser now, a quarter teaspoon mixed into 50 gallons. The statistic of Kalkwasser in your tank is one quarter teaspoon per 50 gallons of water. All right, this is from the Reef Aquarium, I told you by Julian Sprung and J. Charles Delbeek. Manual dosing, I didn't want to screw it up. You know how I am, I mix up numbers sometimes. Here it is. It is possible to manually add Kalkwasser each day 
adding no more than 0.8 grams or a quarter teaspoon of dry Kalkwasser per 190 liters, 50 gallons, can be added to a container and mixed with cool RODI water. This water can be mixed with the Kalkwasser and can be slowly poured into a high flow area. For a reef with a moderate amount of coral, the addition of a quarter teaspoon two or three times a day with at least an hour between may be sufficient to meet calcium and alkalinity demands of the system. I used to do that and you pour it in. Now I would do it not three times a day. The thing with dosing Kalkwasser also is to test. You don't have to do it three times a day. If you need to do it three times a day then you can do it. So this is another way of dosing Kalkwasser without putting it in your ATO. It's just a lot more labor intensive, as I said. All right, all right, let's review. Done a water change, maybe it's a few days after the water change, you test pH, alkalinity, and calcium. Then you determine your evaporation water, how much evaporation is occurring. So say you're going through a gallon each day, in your ATO. So a half teaspoon in one gallon, there's the math. Your ATO is probably going off 10 or 20 times a day, maybe once an hour. I, I really don't listen to mine. I hear it sometimes, but I don't know how often. And now I have it's servicing three of the tanks, so I know I go through five gallons for all three. So a half teaspoon per gallon is what I put in there. So I'm roughly, I actually go a little less because I'm two part dosing. It doesn't have to be a half teaspoon. Do some testing, start low, maybe one quarter teaspoon per gallon in your ATO, along with your two part dosing and see what the figures are coming out. See what the tests are doing. Probably, I'm gonna throw you a curveball now, guys. Let's not get too into it though. I have tr experimented with this. If you have a low level of evaporation, you can use white vinegar in your ATO water mixture along with the Kalkwasser. What the vinegar does is it helps dissolve more of the Kalkwasser, up to 30% more. That could give you enough Kalkwasser into your tank to be able to do it when you have a low evaporative level of water in your tank. There's a couple limitations too to Kalkwasser. I get a lot of questions, guys, about can I just rely on Kalkwasser in my ATO to use as my calcium and alkalinity? And I have to say that's one of the limitations. If you have a larger tank and you're using up a lot of calcium and alkalinity, there won't be enough Kalkwasser in your ATO to be able to supply the demand and that can only come from testing. So the limitation is not having enough Kalkwasser in your ATO to supply the demand. That's one limitation. There is a possibility you can overdose but it's not so critical or scary that you'll wreck your tank. If you overdose with Kalkwasser your pH will sky and you could kill fish right away but that usually doesn't happen because don't forget your you have a minimal, if you have a 10 gallon tank and you put a little too much Kalkwasser in there, it'll raise your pH, but not for an extended period of time. I wanted to read this to you too, guys, because I get this a lot. There's a lot of people that are saying that water change is enough. And this comes right from a very advanced, well-known reef keeper. All right, same book. Water changes with a salt mix that produces water with high calcium level are a practical means of raising the calcium level quickly. In fact, water changes alone can be used to maintain adequate calcium levels, but the calcium level alone is not the limiting factor for coral growth. The saturation state of calcium and carbonate alkalinity is. Periodic water change is therefore not a realistic means 
of keeping up with the demands of growing corals. So that's why you can't solely rely on water change to keep your calcium and alkalinity high enough. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll treat that like a review. So hopefully we really clearly understand dosing calquasser now. And have a great rest of the day. And I'll see you on Wednesday for Water Change Wednesday. New viewers, Water Change Wednesday is a question and answer format. I get lots of questions that I answer from your comments below the video. And then I try to answer them in the video on Water Change Wednesday. All right, so you can try that.